I'm going to show you how to crochet the most basic crochet blanket border and we're going to get started right now. my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen with Hooked for Hope. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I get to share with you how to make the super simple single crochet blanket border. It is amazing. It's just a single crochet stitch. That's all it is. There's no stitch count requirements involved at all. So you're really able to make this border on any blanket that you can think of. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button and share my video with anyone who you think would really like this video or benefit from the information that I share with you. Also, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you get notified whenever I release, release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects and you're really not going to want to miss out. This pattern doesn't have any specific materials that you will need to make it. Uh, you're really going to just use whatever yarn that you think would complement the blanket best. Also, the crochet hook that you're going to want to use will most likely be the same crochet hook that you used within the blanket itself. You'll just want to continue using the same crochet hook unless the yarn that you are using for the border is a different type of yarn. And then I would just recommend using the crochet hook that is recommended on the yarn label. All right, let's go ahead and dive right into how to make this super simple single crochet blanket border. Okay, when making a crochet blanket border, there are two parts to the crochet blanket border. The first part is the foundation row of the border, which is just the very first row of the border attached to the blanket itself. The foundation row of your blanket border is honestly the most important part of the border because it sets up the entire thing, making sure that your stitch counts are on point, making sure that everything is smooth so when you go into row two of your blanket border, you're just ready to go and you can focus on the blanket border pattern itself, easy peasy without a hitch. What you need to take into consideration when working on the foundation row of your border onto your blanket is what your stitches look like within the pattern. This will really be important when working on the sides of your blanket. A lot of people really struggle with blanket borders when it comes to the sides of their blanket. And again, that is where the foundation row of your blanket border takes care of that. Okay, so here I have three squares. This square right here is all single crochets. This square right here is all half double crochets. And this last square here is all double crochets. With the single crochet square, I'm going to begin by showing you how to attach the yarn to your blanket. Create your slip knot. Leave a long enough tail so you can weave in your end. Okay, there you go. Take the top corner. Doesn't really matter which corner you begin with. It really doesn't. In this case, I'm going to pretend I just finished the blanket and I'm going to attach in the top right hand corner with a slip stitch. Okay, so take my yarn, yarn over, pull through, and then pull all the way through so there's only one loop on my crochet hook that attaches our yarn. We're going to chain one and single crochet into that very first stitch. And that is our very first single crochet of our border. For this pattern, you're just going to put one single crochet in each stitch all the way across and then pause in that top left hand corner so I can show you what to do next. And in the very last stitch here, you're actually going to put three single crochets. I'll tell you why. The first single crochet is going to be the very last stitch of this row. The second single crochet that you put in that corner stitch is going to be your turning single crochet to help us turn to the other side. And then the third single crochet in that same corner stitch will be the very first stitch for this side of the work, okay? So that's why we put three 
in this particular pattern. When it comes to the sides, that's where everyone really gets confused and that's okay. I'm going to help you out right now. So if your blanket ends with a single crochet, so the last stitch or first stitch is a single crochet or a chain one to get to your next row, you're just going to put one single crochet in the side of that row. So if you're looking at a bunch of single crochets, if you see the little X shapes or see how there's like a line kind of dividing this section and then lines here dividing this section, lines here dividing this section. So each section has two different rows of single crochets in there. So you can either focus on that and know, okay, so this line right here, this row, oh, there's that single crochet. Okay, so then the next row, put a single crochet. There's another way that you could see those two, see your rows. So when it comes to the single crochets, you'll see these little bumps, these like little hills, mounds, right? You'll put one single crochet on the top part of that little hill and one single crochet on the bottom part of that little hill. I'm gonna work through this with you so you can see, so don't worry if you're still not quite understanding what I'm talking about. So, this row right here, we already put a single crochet on the side of that row. There was a little mound here, so this spot, this stitch right here, is going to be the bottom part of that little hill, that little mound, and it's also going to be in line with this row right here. There we go. Next row, the bottom part of that X shape right there, it's going to be the very top part of that mount. One single crochet right there, okay? The next row, be the top part of that next X right there, okay? So you can either go mount, so C mount, so top of mount, bottom mount, top of mount, bottom mount, okay? Or you can just acknowledge, I have 21 rows here. There's 21 rows. So I will have 21 single crochets counting down the side here, okay? So there are the different ways of tackling your single crochet row or with your last stitch, first stitch being a single crochet or a chain one. That's how you're gonna tackle this side. Let's say your side ends with a half double crochet or begins with a half double crochet. So last stitch here, I'm going to put three single crochets, one, two, three to turn this last stitch of this row is a half double crochet, so I'm going to put one single crochet in the side of that row, okay? Half double crochet row right here, one single crochet side of that row. Half double crochet right there, one single crochet side of that row. Half double crochet right there, one single crochet side of that row. Also, you can count your rows. I know that there were 20 rows in this particular swatch, so I should end with 20 single crochets on the side of my work, okay? This doesn't necessarily have the mounds like the single crochet stitch did, but you can identify, especially if you stretch it out a little bit, there's my half double crochet right there. So I'm going to put one single crochet in the side of that row, okay? If your work is double crochets or a chain two to get to your next row. So 
So again, I'm going to put the last stitch, three single crochets, one, two, three, sets me up for my side. This is going to be double crochets or a chain two to get to your next row. If this is the case for your project, you're going to put two single crochets in the side of that row, okay? So this row right here, those are double crochets. So I'm gonna find the last stitch here and put one, two single crochets in the side of that stitch, okay? Then this stitch right here, stretch your work if you need to see what's going on. Those guys are double crochets. So put two single crochets in the side of that row. Here I got a chain two, putting two single crochets in the side of that row. Okay, again, we're looking for the sides of your row. If you're really struggling with finding the sides of your row, you can stretch the work out. And by stretching it out, you can see that's a row, that's a row, that's a row, okay? You can really help identify where your rows are at. Row, row, okay? So hopefully that helps. If your work is intermittent, and so like one row, you'll end with a chain two, and then the next row, you'll end with a chain one, then you'll just continue following your pattern. So if it ends with a chain two, you'd put two single crochet, one, two, and then if the next row ended with a chain one, you would just put one single crochet, okay? So just follow your row, Follow what stitch was the last stitch or the first stitch of that row. And if it was a single crochet, a half double crochet, or a chain one, you're only putting one single crochet in the side of that row. If your last stitch or first stitch was a double crochet or a chain two, you will put two single crochets in the side of that row. Okay, because this pattern does not have a stitch count requirement, you're not having to make sure you meet any certain count. So just go ahead and make sure you follow along with those steps of your pattern and you'll be good. Okay, so going back to the single crochet swatch that I have here, side of each row, found my little mound, top, bottom. I'm going to go ahead and finish the side of this work, guys, and I'll meet you at the corner just to show you where to find your stitches that would run on the bottom of your work, okay? Okay, last stitch of this side, because that is the last row that we're having to put any stitches in the side of. Going to put three single crochets in the corner. One, two, three, and again, that helps us to turn to the other side. Okay, so now we have reached the very bottom of the work. So we are actually working on the other side of that foundation row. We are actually not going to pick up the foundation row because that would really mess with our outside row count because our foundation row wasn't really counted as our row. So we're going to pick up the very first stitch of row one, okay? So don't do the foundation row, do the very first stitch of row one, okay? And pick up those stitches from row one, just one single crochet in each stitch all the way across, okay? Go ahead and continue on and I'll meet you at the third corner. Okay, here's the corner. Going to put three single crochets in that corner. One, two, three. Turning to our last side, we will do it this side the exact same way that we did the first side, okay? So just repeat what you did on the other side of your work where you were working with the rows and I will meet you at the very last stitch here in the corner, okay? You're doing great.
Okay, once you have reached that very last stitch or very first stitch, they're both one and the same, you're only going to put two single crochets in that stitch. One, two, and then the very first single crochet we did for this row, that would have been our three. That's our third stitch. So all we have to do is slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet, and that closes off our row one of our border. Our foundation row is done, and this is what it's going to look like. Boom. The foundation row is the hardest row of this entire pattern, so if you thought that was easy peasy, then the rest of it's just cake. But if you ran into any trouble, then take a big breather because you just did all the hard work. The rest of it is super simple, okay? For row two of your border, we're going to chain one. Single crochet in the very first stitch that we just slip stitched into. Boom, right there. Okay, single crochet, one single crochet in each stitch all the way across to this corner, and I will meet you in this corner to show you what to do with that corner. Okay, we have just reached this three single crochet corner here. Here's what you're going to do for your corner for row two. You're going to single crochet in the first of the three, in that second single crochet there, that turning single crochet, that's where we're going to put our three single crochets, okay? One, two, three, and that helps turn our work. And in that third single crochet, we're putting one single crochet in that. And we're off, one single crochet in each stitch all the way to the next corner where again we're going to look at the three single crochets in the first single crochet we will put one in the second single crochet we will put our three single crochets and then in the third single crochet we just put one single crochet and then off to the next corner so go ahead and continue on with our work and I will meet you back at the beginning to show you how we close off row two. Sound good? You're doing great. See you soon. All right, coming upon that last corner here, here are the three single crochets. Again, the first single crochet, you're gonna put one single crochet. The second single crochet, we're going to put three single crochets, so one, two, three, and then we are right next to our very next stitch. This would be the third single crochet here. So we're going to slip stitch in the top of that first single crochet to close off row two of our border. Look how clean that looks. It's awesome. Okay, so when it comes to this particular border, corner one will always be done the same way. Corner two will always be done the same way. Corner three will always be done the same way. Corner one, two, and three, whenever you come upon the last three single crochets, you're just going to put one single crochet in the first, three single crochet in the second, and one single crochet in the third. The only corner that's going to change each row is going to be that fourth corner right here where we slip stitch to close. Every single row that we expand out of our border, you're going to find that you're having to add one more single crochet before you slip stitch. I'm going to go over this with you just to make sure that's clear, but you will notice that all, these, all of these slip stitches will stay going in one straight line right here, whereas your corner is going to go more diagonal this way. So how I'm going to show you how this works, I'm gonna go over the next three rows with you. So we just finished row two. I'm gonna go over row three, four, and five, where I'm just gonna focus on this corner alone to make sure you get what I'm talking about here, okay? So starting row three, 
of our border. Again, we're going to chain one, single crochet in that same stitch that we slip stitched into. Okay, I'm going to let you continue around the entire three corners and I'll meet up with you at this fourth corner to show you how it's different. Remember, corner one, corner two, and corner three, they're all done the same way, always done the same way. Okay, so I will meet you back here to close off row three of our border. Great, okay, we have made it to that fourth corner of row three for our border. I have made it to those three single crochets in the corner. Again, one single crochet in the first, three single crochet in the second, one, two, three, but now I see one whole other stitch before I reach my slip stitch to close off row three. So I'm going to single crochet in that one stitch and then I'm right next to my slip stitch and I can slip stitch to close off row three. And when I lay it flat, it has that perfect 90 degree corner right there. So I know that I didn't miss any stitches or add any stitches. That's the way it's supposed to look. Okay, so that was row three. Let's do row four. Again, I'm doing four and five with you too. So going to chain one, single crochet in the same stitch we slip stitched into. Again, go ahead and go around the entire blanket section and I'll meet up with you to close off row four of our border here. All right, here we are again. So I'm on row four of my blanket border, just came up to the last three single crochet, the last corner of row four. Going to put one single crochet in the first single crochet, three single crochet in the second single crochet, and then one single crochet in that third single crochet. Then I see one stitch right here, one, and I'm right next to my slip stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch right there. Okay, so now we're in the fifth row. I'm going to chain one, single crochet in the very first stitch we slip stitched into. Again, repeat what we've been doing for the last few rows. Go ahead and make your way all the way around the border and I'll meet you in this fourth corner to show you how I close off row five. You're doing great. See you in a second. All right, fourth corner of row five. I'm at that three single crochet corner. First single crochet gets one single crochet. Second single crochet gets three single crochets. Two, three. Third single crochet gets one single crochet. And then, oh, look. Then there's two stitches before my slip stitch. So I'm going to single crochet in the first and I'm going to single crochet in a second. Single crocheting in each stitch all the way up to my slip stitch and then I slip stitch to close row five. So what I really wanted you to see in the process of each row of corner four is you increase by one stitch the further you grow the more rows you have. Okay, so for row one, we got to the corner and we just did two single crochets and then slip stitched in the first single crochet to close. Then with row two, we were actually able to put three single crochets in that corner stitch before we closed. In row three, we were able to put three single crochets in that corner stitch and then one single crochet in the third. And then the fourth single or fourth row, we were able to put three single crochets in that corner stitch, one single crochet in that third single crochet of the corner, plus one. And now in that fifth row, we were able to put three single crochets in the corner, one single crochet in that third single crochet stitch of the corner, and then one, two. So, row six, 
would be corner three plus one and then one, two, three. Then row seven would be corner three single crochets plus your one for that corner and then one, two, three, four. So you're always going to increase by one stitch the more rows you increase by, okay? You could really stop at row two. They recommend that your crochet blanket border is at least two rows wide, at least two rows wide. So you could have stopped at row two or after row two, but you could make this border as big as you want it to be. I mean, literally, it could be this little square right here, and then you just expand the border until you have a full 40 by 40 receiving blanket. That would actually be a really cool idea. Don't steal my idea. <laughs> just kidding. But, <laughs> but literally, you guys could really make this border as wide as you want it to be for your particular blanket. Just know in that fourth corner here, you're going to add a single crochet stitch every row that you add. That's all you got to know. Corner one, two, and three always stay the same. Once you have completed your row, once you are all done with your border, all you have to do is cut your yarn. Make sure you leave a long enough tail to weave in your end. You will have slip stitched to close your row. Then you're just going to yarn over and pull through to make a slip knot. And then usually what I will do to make this really clean is I will insert my crochet hook in the back of the stitch that I just slip stitched into. I will yarn over and I will pull that yarn through and it just helps to make this really flat. It, it helps it to lay flat. So that's a little trick that I do. You don't have to do it, but yeah, then just weave that in however you're going to weave it in. Weave in all of your ends and your border is done. Great job. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, you'll probably really enjoy my other crochet blanket border videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for joining me today. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.